and welcome to The Modern Lady, where you'll learn how to elevate your life with elegance. I'm Devereaux. If you're new to my channel, please hit that red subscribe button so that you can get an update when I've got a new video to share. If you're returning, welcome back. Thank you ladies so much for your continued love and support for my channel. I appreciate and adore you all. Today's video is an interview in a series called Pearls of Wisdom, where I shine a spotlight on women that believe in the power of style and sophistication. Today's guest I'm really excited to have with us today. Her name is April Gro. She is a classic and capsule wardrobe style blogger at Stunning Style. April, welcome to The Modern Lady. Thank you. I'm so happy to be here. Awesome. What I love about April, ladies, is her classic style, but she talks about classic style with a twist. And I've definitely been following her blog. I've followed her on social media for at least a year or two now. So I'm really excited for her to share with us today all of her amazing insight and wisdom around classic style in capsule wardrobes. So April, for any lady out there watching this interview and she's not familiar with Stunning Style, can you share with us the story behind Stunning Style and how everything came to be what it is today? Sure. Uh, so before I had kids, I was the director of public relations and marketing. I love all aspects of it. I've always been a writer and I love the creative aspect of that job as well. And when I found out I was pregnant with triplets, I decided to, well, I went on bed rest and I decided to leave my career. I always wanted to be a stay at home mom. And um, I have been for the last 13 years and we had six kids in six years. And a few years ago when our youngest was in preschool, my husband came to me and said, um, you're about to be alone all day and you need something to do. I, I had two hobby blogs just to keep my, my mind and my creative juices going. Um, I really crave that, that outlet. And um, he said, I've set aside money for you to start a business. And I really think you should start a blog about style. And I was like, no, <laughs> no thank you. <laughs> but he persisted. And so I did start it um, with the agreement that A, I could blog about lots of things and B, I could cut my head off in all the pictures. <laughs> and he said yes, but he was not telling the truth. I was not allowed to cut my head off in the pictures. <laughs> and um, I quickly narrowed down my topics. To be honest, I was intimidated by styling, uh, blogging about style. I didn't feel qualified. Um, I didn't feel I didn't feel qualified. And, and so after a certain time, the, the analytics don't lie. And my readers were not reading the recipes or the mommy stuff or the travel series. They were only reading my style stuff. So it was, um, for me, it was a moment of courage to put myself out there in that way. And I stopped writing about everything else. And I only proceeded forward with style. Uh, articles and outfits and eventually um, my readers kept asking me to take them shopping. I want you to come shopping with me. I want you to create outfits for me. I want you to help me with my closet and as much as those girlfriend shopping trips would be just logistically I can't do that for everyone and so that's how the stunning style wardrobe guides came to be. I started creating classic style seasonal capsule wardrobe guides and that was my way of shopping with everyone. So I curate a seasonal collection. I create 100 outfits for them. I give them all the shopping links. And, um, and then they get a calendar every month that says, you wear this outfit every day. There's a Facebook group. They have their own website with exclusive content. Um, and then they wanted me to help them refine their style and, and develop a signature style. So I started a series about classic style twists. It was, it was sort of a whim. A friend asked me if she was too old to wear destroyed jeans now that she was turning 40. And so I wrote a response to her in my how to dress edgy classic blog post and they wanted more. Well, what about me? I, I'm not edgy, but I am this. So I wrote a series of five posts 
Um, there's cute classic, there's edgy classic, minimal classic, soft classic, and sporty classic. And that is by no means a finite list. Those are just the ones I've written about. I have a list of probably a hundred more classic style twists that you could be. You could be boho classic, you could be quirky classic, preppy classic, casual classic. I just um, I just haven't written those articles because they they take a lot of time. <laughs> and I, I it's really important to me that they be really high quality. Um, and so I developed the society, the Stunning Style Society, and it's a membership and we dive into those twists and um, I help them use those to develop their own signature style because classic style is more than one. I mean, there are so many variations of it, you know, and, and while you may love classic style, it can be just a little bit off unless you add that twist that makes it yours. And so now that's that's what I do. All my kids are in school full time. And so I work during the day while they're gone and then I get to be the full time mom after school. And that's a real, um, a real blessing for me. That's what I want. And I'm really grateful that this allows me to do that. I, I get to do both. Best of both worlds, I love that. And you um, talk about classic style. I, I think there are so few of us now that really admire and embrace classic style, especially over the trends. So I'm really curious, April, how do you define classic style? Uh, you know, classic style uh, is really, what makes it so beautiful are the subtle things. It's about clean silhouettes tailored cuts, neat hems, a lot of neutral colors, um, simple patterns like stripes or plaid, minimal detailing. Often excellent tailoring is the detail that will grab your eye even if you're not aware of it. Pared down jewelry, um, simplicity, smart structured fabrics, quality, um, maybe a splash of red lipstick to add it all, a pop of color. Classic style women really don't care for a lot of frills and fuss, and they typically stay away from anything over the top. They, they'll take these classic items and then pair them with a statement piece maybe, and that could be the pop of color. It could be a beautiful necklace. Um, a fantastic bag or a gorgeous coat. They also love special details. They, classic style is based on foundational pieces, which, you know, sometimes when I start talking about foundational pieces, people's eyes gloss, o gloss over and I, I start to lose and I'm like, no, come back to me, come back. <laughs> your, your foundational pieces can be very special with details like beautiful buttons a notch lapel, a jewel detail, a ruffle, a peplum, um, bell sleeves, ribbing. I mean, they're, they're small ways, but because everything else is so foundational and neutral, those details really can come forward. It's all about the details. I love it that. It really is. Talk about the structured fabrics and mm -hmm. the lack of a lot of patterns other than just those simple patterns and simplicity I think is really one way to have a just a one word definition of what classic style really is it is simple and it's understated but it's also very polished and that's really the power of it so yeah. you know you're all about classic style with a twist and April maybe what is one piece of advice that you can share for any woman trying to figure out well what's my twist <laughs> Well, you're in luck because I have a quiz. I, I created a quiz about a year ago just for fun. And uh, it turned out to be really popular with uh, my readers. And um, it there is there is a caveat, though. When you take this quiz, you have to ignore the shoulds. As women, I feel like we fall into this trap of, I should dress this way because I am a woman. I am a professional. I am a teacher. I'm a mom. I'm over 40. I, you know, like 
I, I'm a grandma, I should dress this way because, and you know, the time of my life when I lost my own sense of style was after I became a mom. I am a very straightforward, serious, no nonsense kind of person. I'm, I'm not very fun if we're being totally honest, but I'm not known for being fun. Um, but I thought that to be a good mom, I had to be very soft and very sweet and very not me. And I thought I could change who I was by changing how I dressed. So I started dressing that way to try to become that way and it won't work. And I finally realized that that just didn't suit me. Um, <clears throat> I, my brother had come to visit and he, I hadn't seen him in a few years because we live very far away from each other. And he's like, April, what's going on? You're not looking like you used to. <laughs> and I, you know, I told him, I was like, I don't, I just don't want to stand out. I don't want to be seen. You know, I just, I'm just trying to blend in. And he said, well, it's not working. People will see you anyway. And so you may as well show up as yourself. And so, I mean, he had a point and that's when things changed for me. And so, um, when you, when you take this quiz, forget the shoulds. And even once I came back to my classic style that I've always loved, I thought I should like polka dots because polka dots are classic. Well, I don't like polka dots and that's okay. I still love classic style, just not that particular version of classic style. So when you take this quiz, don't think about your orthopedic feet <laughs> and don't think about the fact that you live in the country or in a small town where no one dresses that way. <clears throat> Excuse me. Choose the things that you love. In a perfect world, I would wear those shoes. And in a perfect world, if no one was judging me or I lived in New York, I would wear that or I would choose that. And if you do that, the quiz is pretty, pretty accurate. And so that can help you figure out what your twist is. And then I've written these articles and it'll direct you to the correct article and you can read more about them. And honestly, I think everyone should read all five of them because as important as it is to, uh, I've listed out all the details that, that will help you dress that way but reading the other ones will help you know which details to avoid, which can help you really refine your style and make sure you're sending the style message that you want to send because we're all walking billboards and dressing true to who you are is, is sending a message to everyone around you, how you want to be treated, the kind of person that you are. And, and it really helps to know, how to do that. So all the details of how to do that are in these articles and the, and the quiz will help you figure out which one you are. I love that. And April, I do think you're very fun. Oh, you. <laughs> I think the fun side of you is really displayed and showed on your blog and on Instagram. And so I have to disagree with you there. <laughs> I don't know if my kids would disagree with you. My husband is very fun. I think working is fun. <laughs> I, think, I think yard work is fun. I think cleaning is fun. And my kids don't think that's fun. And he's the one who will say, it's Saturday and we've done the bathrooms. Let's go do something else. And I'm like, but what about the garage? <laughs> so, <laughs> we all have that source of joy. And it yeah. sounds like you're very type A efficient. I'm with you. I yeah. love I'm, I'm definitely in that yeah. camp as well, April, so you're yeah. not alone. <laughs> well, then you would think I'm fun, wouldn't you? <laughs> <laughs> like-minded, like-minded for sure. Ladies, I think what April said is so important. You have to be true to yourself and have that level of authenticity in not only your style, but in your life overall. When you're trying to be someone you're not, to fit someone else's expectations, you end up disappointed and empty and there's just a huge disalignment. I think I just made that word up. There's just this huge disconnect between who you truly are and who you're showing up as in life. And so I think that's so important, not just for our styles, but how we are living. 
So another thing that we have in common, April, is that you talk about Jack, uh, First Lady Jacqueline Kennedy and Jackie O. I'm a huge fan of her. I adore her so much. And on your blog, you talk about how she really led two different lives based on, on those names. And so the, the sense of identity that she had was different. Can you talk a little bit about the two different life experiences that she had? Sure. Um, you know, Jackie Kennedy was raised, she was a debutante, and she was raised to be a prized thoroughbred, just like her beloved horses. She was raised to be beautiful, to be gracious, to be charming, to stand by her man, to handle pressure with grace and unflustered. She was very adored by her father, and she married into one of the most powerful families in the country. And when she married Jack Kennedy, for her, it was a fairy tale come true. She was marrying America's, one of America's most eligible bachelors, you know, our, our version of a prince. And she thought she was about to lead a fairy tale life. And as first lady of the United States, she represented our country. She represented immaculate style, a picture perfect all American family ideal. And the whole world was watching her and had her on a pedestal. And <clears throat> Jackie Onassis was a survivor. And that is sort of the opposite of a debutante. She survived a degrading marriage to a notorious philanderer in the public eye. This was, I mean, there wasn't the level of paparazzi coverage that we have today, but it was no secret that he stepped out on her all the time. And it was very public with his affair with Marilyn Monroe. She survived the assassination of her husband, both physically and emotionally, well, and mentally. I mean, I cannot imagine what that did to her. And she had to protect her children and help them through it after. And she had to carry the grief of the nation on her shoulders. She didn't get to grieve alone. And immediately after, she survived the upheaval of her family from their home, the White House. They had to move out right away. And because, you know, they had just lost their father and husband, and now they have to find a new place to live. Jackie Kennedy was very feminine, very sweet, and she had a very docile style to her. And Jackie Onassis was harder. She was worldwide. She was a lot tougher. And it showed in her more masculine, streamlined style. They were both very classic looks, but um, on opposite ends of the extreme. And if you compare their two styles, well, and even her second marriage to um, Mr. Onassis was it was not a, a good marriage. It wasn't, um, a, you know, it wasn't a happy time for her either. And if you if you compare their styles, Jackie Kennedy wore skirts. Jackie Onassis wore trousers. Jackie Kennedy wore Chanel suits and gloves and pillboxes and tiny purses that wouldn't hold anything. And Jackie Onassis wore button-ups, turtlenecks, trench coats, and she carried tote bags. Jackie Kennedy wore a lot of light pastels and pink. Jackie Onassis wore a lot of black, a lot of white, and she would throw in some bold red. Jackie Kennedy smiled and waved at the cameras Jackie Onassis fought for her privacy and she would cover half of her face with those signature, iconic, enormous sunglasses. And Jackie K wore pumps and she stood by her man. Jackie Onassis wore flats, loafers, and boots because she was walking the streets of New York living her own life. And they both wore pearls. So these experiences really shaped who she was. Jackie Kennedy was loved, adored, pampered, and trained to be seen and not heard. Jackie Onassis 
survived ordeals that most of us never have to go through. And she did it in the public eye. She had to develop a very thick skin. And even after that presidency was over, she was hounded her whole life. America is still fascinated with the Kennedy family and they get no peace and no privacy from us. But she learned to live her own life and to stand up for herself. And the change in her style changed what she was saying. Her billboard message changed. You cannot walk on me anymore. I am my own person and I don't have to let you take my picture anymore. And, um, you know, I've, I've, I'm one of those Americans who's always been fascinated by the Kennedys and I've always admired Jackie's resilience and how she came into her own and, um, she took her life back and she lived it the way she wanted to for the rest of her days. And I think she's such a beautiful example of what femininity can look like because it doesn't have to just be the standard cookie cutter dresses and skirts and pumps that we tend to think of the only way that femininity can be described or displayed. And she was feminine throughout her entire life. She had that sense of dignity and grace and she had that power. She had her own power just in being the strength of, of a woman, despite all that she had to endure in her life. And, and like you're mentioning, April, it was not easy. And I think, um, you know, the average person probably would not have been able to rise or overcome some of those challenges in the way that she did, especially in the public spotlight. So she's just an incredible example of what strength and grace and femininity looks like in in different perspectives but she definitely was a a constant and still is um really an icon for for the world to live by her really just outstanding example of what grace and and femininity looks like well and what's interesting is even though her styles were so different um they were she was iconic both ways you know it's not that one style that she had is better than the other they just were for different phases and stages of her life that suited her then and they were both phenomenal like i can appreciate i i identify with jackie onassis style but i can appreciate how beautiful jackie kennedy's style was so they were both beautiful they were both wonderful and they both suited her when she needed them absolutely and i think that's a really good example for any woman that's interested in evolving her style that feels like maybe like you were alluding to earlier, she shouldn't or she can't because of a life stage or any other obligation. As we are all evolving, our styles should evolve with us because it really is the personal brand. It's the exterior, the display of who we are internally. Mm -hmm. And First Lady Jacqueline Kennedy and, and Jackie O, you know, both examples and both styles she had were absolutely impeccable. And so it really is all about being able to be authentic to, to who you are. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. So I know you talk about on your blog the idea of women accepting compliments instead of deflecting them. And I think that's really important, April, in an elegant life for women to be able to gracefully accept a compliment. And so I want to hear from you. Um, why do you think that so many women really struggle with accepting compliments? Why is it so hard? Well, I think that for a lot of us, we've been raised or taught that it's rude, somehow distasteful to feel good about yourself and to be open about it. Um, men are not raised this way. It, I think it's very much a, a female thing to be demure and self-deprecating and that that is somehow, I think it falls in with the same category as being a martyr. Um, women are praised for martyr behaviors, for, for putting themselves behind everyone else and not attending to their own needs somehow makes you a better person and what that makes you is exhausted and unable to fulfill anybody's needs, you know, much, you know, not even your own. And I think another aspect of this is women will tear each other down 
when they suspect that someone else feels too good about themselves. It, maybe it's that primal instinct and competitiveness to find a mate, but we don't lift each other and boost each other the way that we should. We seem to think that if she's attractive, then I'm not. And if she's successful, that must mean I'm not. And that's just not true. There are 5 billion ways to be successful, to be smart, to be kind, to be a great mom, to be attractive. And my version of that does not need to look like your version of that. And they're not even comparable. For every woman out there, there is a different version of these things. And in order not to become a target of, of that negativity, we often play small and we're rewarded for it. And <clears throat> I think another part of it is that we don't believe it. it there's a lot of negative self-talk in our heads saying, that's a lie. You're not those things. And so we verbalize that in deflecting these compliments. I really love what Brene Brown says about owning your accomplishments. Don't puff up, but don't play small. And I, I personally struggle with accepting compliments myself. I was raised, um, well, I'm from the South and I think it's even worse there, uh, but I was raised to deflect compliments. It's a very, very Southern thing to do, but when someone pays me a compliment, um, I have to say that in my head, don't puff up and don't play small. So now I smile and say, thank you. That, that's all that's needed. And I try to help other women accept compliments. Um, if, I, if I pay someone a compliment, a lot of ways, the way a woman will deflect it is say, oh, you're so sweet. Like I'm lying or just saying that to be nice. And I'll always say, oh, I'm never sweet. I'm kind, but I'm never disingenuous. And that was a sincere compliment. You really do look really nice today. And I think that makes them stop and hear me. I'm, I'm not just saying that. I never just say it. If I said it, I meant it. And I hope that the next time you hear me compliment you, it will sink in a little deeper that I meant it. I really, that's really how I feel. So um, it can be hard to hear the kind things. It, they're, they're scary to believe. It's scary to believe that um, that I'm successful or it's scary to believe that I'm a good mom or any of those things because the next time I fail, that voice in my head is going to say, see, that wasn't true after all, was it? But it is true. We all make mistakes and that's okay. I can still be a good mom and make mistakes. I can still be successful in my ways and make mistakes. It's just part of my journey to success, right? And, and the definitions of success for me is different, different than the definition of success for anyone else. So uh, shutting off those negative, that negative talk in your head and ignoring anyone who would want to tear you down because they feel like less, because they feel like they're less because you're being more. There is no more. We should all just um, focus on our own version of what that means. So it's, and so it's hard for me too. It's, it's deeply ingrained, but I do, I do try to do better. Yeah. I think it's, it's really just a part <clears throat> of the evolutional journey of really coming into your own as a woman, because like yourself, April, I struggled with it for years and I would deflect a compliment. Oh, I love your scarf. Oh, this old thing. I got it, you know, 10 years ago. I would just always find a way to, yeah put it down and, and not really take hold and hug the compliment. I was like putting it on a shelf and trying to walk away from it. And I did a video on that earlier this year. The most appropriate response is really just to say, thank you. Like mm -hmm. you said, and it's a gift. It's, it's a, a portion of kindness that someone has shared with you in, in a day. And so I think we are all our toughest critics. And sometimes when we look in the mirror, we see, 50 things that we hate, but it's really important to shift and pivot that mindset to start looking for the 50 things that you love, that you appreciate, because that will just help you feel 
much more inspired and confident as you are living an elegant lifestyle for sure. Absolutely. So April, I know we talked about um, Jack, First Lady Jacqueline Kennedy and Jackie O, so I'm curious what your answer is going to be to this question. Okay. Who is your favorite elegant role model and why? My favorite elegant role model? You know, there are so many of them in my everyday life that you wouldn't recognize their names. Um, my mom has always been an elegant role model in my life um, for a lot of reasons. She is the original stunning style. She would balk and, and you know, say absolutely not. She, is, she was never a style icon, but she's a minimal classic for sure. And um, she always got up and got dressed every day, uh, no matter what the day was, she showed herself that respect and she showed us that we were important enough for her to show up every day um, as her best self. I mean, she didn't spend a lot of time, but she always got up, put on her one of her many uniforms. She had certain style uniforms that she still always wears and what she loves. She'd do her makeup, her hair, and put on some clothes and um, and show up for the day. And, um, you know, she's kind and she's gracious. And she, she would help anyone, but she's not... Um, she's not an outgoing person, you know, but you would never get an unkind word from her. Um, and so she's probably, it's probably my mom and, and she's not the only one in my life that way, but she's the first for sure. And I learned a lot from her. She is not one of those in front of the camera. And I don't mean that literally, like, she's not the kind of person that steals the attention in the room. You know what I mean? Um, but she is that, that quiet example that I've has always been present in my life. I love that. And I think it's just so important for us, April, to have an example to follow and having that role model as, as really a template just displayed out for how you can find that sense of elegance or classic style or minimal style. And so I think for you having your mom there throughout your life and even now definitely helps contribute to your elegance and, and your elegant life experience. And so that's beautiful. Thank you for sharing. Well, last question for you, April, in this interview, what is one piece of timeless advice, or as I like to call it, one pearl of wisdom that you live by every single day. Well, it's one thing that I actually just mentioned, and it's something I learned from my mom. I get up and get dressed every day, no matter what. And I don't spend a lot of time on it. I don't have time, um, but it just makes my day better. It it makes me feel better. It's a, it's a, a manner of self-care for me that I am... Putting, I mean, I only take 20 minutes to get ready in the morning. I have a whole, I have two blog posts about exactly about why and, and exactly how I do it. There's a method, you know, that really helps me because I could drag it on if I don't stick to my routine. Um, but I do take 20 to 30 minutes every day. Unless I am so sick, I cannot get out of bed. I will put on makeup, even if it's a simple you know, slick my hair back ponytail. Well, back when I had longer hair, right? And it's just as easy to put on um, a cute t-shirt and um, my favorite jeans and a pair of flats or sandals as it is to put on yoga pants and my college t-shirt. And I feel so strongly about it. When, when we came home with premature triplets, People kept saying, you shouldn't bother with that. You are wasting your time. You need the sleep. Why are you doing that? And, and I was like, oh my gosh, maybe they're right. So for two days, I tried it and I felt awful. 
I was no more sleep deprived and tired and frustrated and frazzled and than I was the, the other days, but I felt awful because I didn't show up for myself. And every time I passed the mirror, I would, you know, I just, it makes such a difference and it doesn't have to be, it doesn't have to be time consuming. You do not have to wear fancy clothes to look nice. If you look at my outfits, you know, I'm going to spoil the secret, but it's almost always a t-shirt, a sweater, or a button up and a pair of jeans. I, you know, I always look a lot fancier than I really am. If you, if you really look, I, this is a sweater and I'm wearing a pair of jeans and a pair of flats, but choosing a nice t-shirt, maybe in a color that makes you look fantastic or a stripe that you absolutely love um, and a pair of jeans that fits you well, but is really comfortable. It's so easy and you can look nice. It's all washable. Those are things that I would wear when I had three babies spitting up all over me. You know, yes, they had to go in the wash after, but they weren't ruined. I could get down on the floor and play with my kids. I could take them to the park and that. And so I, it's, it's something that I really, really talk to the members of the society about. I talk about it a lot on my blog. I feel so strongly about just get up and get dressed every day. You will feel better. You deserve it. Absolutely. It's one of those ways that you, you put yourself first and it, it's not selfish to do that. It is a form of self-care. I agree with you, April. And I think when you get up and get dressed, you are changing how you feel, which changes how you show up. It changes how you are experiencing that day ahead. And it makes such a big difference. So I agree with you. Absolutely. Well, April, this has been such a pleasure. Thank you so much for allowing me to interview you today. I really appreciate you having me. I've, I've enjoyed it a lot. Wonderful. And I'm sure all the ladies watching will certainly give a thumbs up because they enjoyed the interview as well. So April, where is the best place for people to find you online? Well, you can find me at stunningstyle.com for sure. And um, that's where you'll find the quiz. That's where you'll find the style twist articles. I also have a Facebook group called Capsule Wardrobes for Classic Style, where women who love these two topics can come. And, you know, I share a weekly uh, Shock Your Closet Challenge outfit every week. I do a weekly Facebook live there and share style. Um, I call it my style secret or, or my style snack, sorry, style snack Facebook live and, and share a little style snack with them. So um, those are probably the two best places to find me. And I would love to see all of you there. Wonderful. And ladies, I do have the links to April's group and her website in the description below. So please do check out her blog and her social media because she is amazing. Thank ladies, you. Oh, you're welcome. Yeah. Ladies, I'd love to know from you in a comment below, share with us which style that you identify with more. Is it First Lady Jacqueline Kennedy or is it Jackie O? April has shared that her style, she's really closely aligned to Jackie O. I also have an appreciation for both, but it probably is no surprise that I really closely align with First Lady Jacqueline Kennedy style. So share with us in a comment below which style you gravitate and align with more, and we will keep the conversation going below. Well, ladies, thank you so much for tuning in to the channel. I hope you enjoyed this video. If it added a sense of inspiration, motivation, or any sort of value to your life, please do give it a thumbs up. Share it with another woman that you know would enjoy being inspired to be authentic in her classic style. And I look forward to seeing you again in another one. Bye.